moving on to the next story about how different demographics respond uh, to a crisis in different ways and how tech is invading the classroom and transforming the student experience, the Wall Street Journal has re- has a, a very interesting article co- called School Goes Online and So Do Class Pranks. <laughs> Ever since the pandemic, the ability to pull pranks out of the classroom and into the virtual classroom have gone through the roof. And I think the people, those of you who are on TikTok, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The pursuit of um, of uh, views and likes on uh, TikTok has resulted in some pretty extreme pranks to the extent that teachers are getting pretty upset. So um, in the story, the Wall Street Journal zooms into the general phenomenon of pulling pranks on teachers, for example, using Zoom, um, but also it highlights a couple of famous examples we've seen on TikTok. So one of the famous jokesters is Jack Busali. Um, and Jack, he pulled his first uh, prank um, after school moved online, and he uh, initiated that each student in his class pulled off a like a dance off um, mid lecture. Uh, so like a dance off for those of you who don't know what a dance off is, is like it's actually really like it's a competition. So you can be like asked for like a sing off or a dance off. So like you like you're like battling each other. So the whole class like stands up in the middle of class. Well, you know they have their video on and they just start like they're like dancing, um, which you know it, it that seems pretty innocent. Um, so that's kind of at like the innocent end of the of the spa- uh, prank spectrum. Well, you can't even send them to the principal's office. Exactly. Like, you can do anything. What's about your it. like as a teacher? How do you even like how do you even begin to handle that? Uh, and the first one, it gathered ten thousand. Uh, sorry, a hundred thousand views on TikTok. So uh, Jack, uh, who's eighteen and he lives in Mexico City, he was pretty unhappy with his hundred thousand views. So he thought he would um, try to do something more extreme. So he designed uh, another prank um, on his philosophy teacher. Um, so while he was um, using Zoom, he uh, he all of a sudden he jumps into the swimming pool and while blasting a version um, of the song, jump on it. And, you know, so so his like pranking behavior is escalating. I guess the teacher can't have forced like the, the mute button. Um, but then like after... Um, like after he jumps in the pool, all of the students um, put this like reconnecting button on. What? Yeah. So 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 this prank is like they're trying to get the teacher to think that the teacher, probably the teacher, since it's like all students, is having internet problems. <laughs> so all of them make this like black screen where they write reconnecting dot dot dot, as we've seen so many times. You know, like yeah. Like we're in a meeting, there's like 15 people, five people, and someone loses connection. It's very disrupting for the meeting because you're like, do we have to wait for that person? Like, can we go on? And there's like 12 people waiting for one person to reconnect, Legends. right? Yeah. So here they all get this like black screen reconnecting dot, dot, dot. But actually they're all there. And the teacher's like, you know, probably swearing, what the fuck is going <laughs> on? It's like trying to reconnect, but they're all like, just there with the black screen. And the teacher um, reported um, that... Um, yeah, so, so, so actually, this prank was was pulled on Patricia Hernandez, which is an assistant professor in communication, and um, and with, but like, oh, it was also pulled on her. That's what it is. So it's pulled. So it's gone viral, and several have done it now. But she says like, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty tech savvy, and even like one of like, you know, so like one out of twenty students, you know, really should be going to class because they don't know how to spell. And had misspelled reconnecting, <laughs> and even so, it wasn't until afterwards she realized um, that it like it, that it was a prank, and that actually like they were all there, and and that um, the st- like the stunt. Um, so the second time um, that um, that Jack pulled this off, the initial you know the, the stunt the the stunt or the prank creator, um, he went up from his hundred thousand views um, to actually. 2.3 million views wow. in 24 hours on wow. his prank. That's a real prank. 
he pulled off. I mean, that is a real prank, and it, it, it's with a different audience, right? So, yeah. so before, I think um, it, it's always been like a popular element of like a U.S. high school film, like you know, or like we're graduating, let's pull a prank on our teacher. But I think this it, it kind of takes it to the next level, um, and I think you know, as a former educator myself. Uh, I I feel pretty conflicted, uh, Jack. I think um, I think your behavior is actually it's it's not okay, because we're forgetting that there's actually another person at the end of that call who's working his or her goddamn ass off to make sure you're still in school. Yeah, that's true. Like being a teacher is perhaps right now, along with being a medical professional, the most ungrateful job in the universe. Um, I'm a member of a group um, on Facebook called the Pandemic Pedagogy. It has like, I think like 30 or 50,000 teachers on it. Um, and most teachers have been given horrible computers, some of them none. Most of them are paying out of pocket to install tripods. Most of them are upgrading for their own dime, their internet connection. Most of them are forced to redo their entire curriculum while staying at home with kids to make sure that you, Jack, will go to university or will actually like make a career in your future. And then you're shitting in their face. Respect to those people. Exactly. Like teachers, you know, need major respect to teachers. I also think like, you know, some things like, you know, I am not void of humor. You know, like I had a student that, um, so we had an American exchange student and I was teaching, I can't recall, it was one of my classes, either in international politics probably, um, and, um, and in Denmark, like a lot of them will do like a semester project. So it's not just the lectures and small written assignments to do like a big semester project. And it spans like several of their subjects. And then they have some guidance. So they have certain amount of hours where they're like, like they're allowed to come to me and get some feedback before they submit it. So that hopefully, you know, they learn something in the process and that work becomes better. And I was pretty young and naive, a teacher, and I wanted to check in with everybody. And and today I know sometimes some teach or some students they'll just never check in. Maybe they won't do the assignment. Maybe they'll write it the night before. So I like very proactively wrote to those people who like didn't contact me. Um, and uh, then I heard back like I guess like the weekend before they had to turn it in on like Wednesday, from from the student, and she and she said. Um, I'm actually having a really hard time with this assignment. I'd, I'd really like some help. I'm totally stuck. And I wrote back to her and said, oh, you know, you're stuck. Like, I'd really like to help. I know it's the weekend, but just like hand something over and, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And then she sends me the file and I open it up and it's like a completely empty document. <laughs> and like, I assume I'm like, okay, so she made some kind of, like maybe, you know, like she's on a PC and I, I'm on a Mac or like, you know, something that like went wrong. And I write her back and I was like, oh, I, I'm so sorry, but something must have gone wrong because, you know, there's nothing in the file. And she just wrote back and said, um, well, that's that, that's how far I am with the assignment. <laughs> You've been pranked. Yeah. And she's like, well, that's what I got. And I, I thought it was kind of funny. But at the end of the day, I failed her because she wrote her she wrote her essay overnight and it was terrible. And what do we learn from this story? Like she didn't learn anything and I didn't really learn anything, right? So at the end of the day, like pulling pranks on teachers, it has like a real effect. And it also wastes a lot wastes a lot of people's time. Like from that moment, I was less likely to help my students on a weekend after that. So we just have to remember like, you know, there's not just like someone's not just a teacher or a student, it's a person. That person's doing a lot of other shit with their time. Yeah. So and like, I guess if you're, if, teachers. if you're a good student and pull out a prank, then probably it's going to be both easier for you and for the teacher because you, you've done your job. Then let's have some fun. Yeah. Or like if she, you know, if she's, yeah, if she handed him like the best goddamn essay I've ever read, then yeah. like, then it would have been funny, Definitely. but it wasn't funny because, you know, like, again, like what did anybody really learn from that situation? And the thing is like, so, so pranking's gone to a whole other level using tech. So the pranks we've looked at, they're not really like tech pranks. They're just pranks being pulled off with tech because they're on Zoom. But um, there is actually a new website called Bueller, um, which is to me a brilliant example of how someone actually uses technology to prank um, the system. And um, Bueller um, is... Um, 
And there's been rumors it's been shut down, but it keeps coming back up. So those of you who have heard about Bueller because they landed in a real shit storm over the summer, I think it's shut down. It is back up again. Bueller is um, a website that you use to have uh, something attend your Zoom lessons for you. So basically, um, you know, Bueller, you log into Bueller, which obviously is, um, you know, is from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is, I appreciate that. That's really funny. Um, But the way it works is to get started with Bueller, you sign up, you confirm your email address, and then you get four, four free credits. And each credit can be used for an hour of class where Bueller attends your lesson like your Zoom lesson instead of you. So what you do is you add your classes um, and then you put in like the Zoom ID, the, your, the password, if there's a password, the start and the end time. And then when your class starts, then the Bueller bot will lock in for you and it will just like, you know, disable your audio and just have that tool, like almost like the reconnecting, you know, that black screen, um, which is your name on the display. And then if like the student pulls out or the teacher pulls out the attendance sheet afterwards, so a lot of them will know, you know, there are some boring teachers out there as well. You know, I love teachers, but we know there are some boring ones that will go like an entire lecture and just talk, 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 talk. And they'll never ask anybody anything. So you know those teachers. So what they do is they log into Bueller, use a credit, and then Bueller will attend that entire lesson for you. And often they're recorded anyways. I'm not sure if Bueller records it. So you just watch it. Actually, I think they do. And then you just watch it later. You just want a, a free hour to get a coffee instead right. of going to school. Kids, and we don't encourage you doing that. Exactly. And actually, like, one of the guys that built Bueller, he said, like, I didn't initially build it for people to, like, not go. But he said, like, you know, we all know that college kids are, like, super bad at getting up in the morning. Like, all of us really want to sleep in. So originally, the idea was that then you could just record it and watch it later. And I'm like, really? That was really the idea? Like, mm, if you don't know how to get up in the morning, you're going to have a hard time holding down a job. Like, I know also jobs are becoming flexible. We're working remotely and we're shoot, like or we're mixing our hours. But granted, at some point, you're going to have to have a work overlap with a boss of some sort that you're going to need to talk to and show that you're a reliable person. Like, the entire world would not become fluid overnight. So I think generally having a sense of like, meeting a deadline and showing up for stuff is also a good skill to learn to master the workforce of the future. Although I know it is changing and it's changing a lot. Um, But so there's been like a massive amount of crackdowns on Bueller. Within a month, 12,000 students from over 100 countries had signed up for Bueller and tokens come as cheap as 59 cents. Meaning that like on top of the four free credits you get, you could actually like buy additional credits for 59 cents. So I see like that's a really low price um, for you to be missing your classes. Yeah, you get a day off of school for $5. Exactly, exactly. But I think that they do, I think they've taken it, it a step too far because actually um, some of the people um, behind Bueller um, have actually also been pranking the uh, the Apple, mm-hmm. like the Apple reviews like the, um, the like the Google store, sorry. The app store? The app store review, yeah. So for example, like some students have been unhappy that you couldn't, so Bueller's like had to, you know, Bueller, their iteration pace is incredible. So one of the things they learned is like, okay, but it's not all classes, they're gonna work with a black screen. So they even had where like, they did this iteration where you could record a loop of yourself. <laughs> Cause also like how much are you moving if you're not talking, right? So if you're doing like this and then this and a couple of like non, non, like not very distinctive moves. Yeah. So they they recorded this loop, but then they, they tried to, so it works with Zoom, but then they tried to like make it work with Google Teams. Um, Sorry, with the Google Hangouts and Microsoft Teams. I'm really messing up all those tech giants today. <laughs> they try to make it work with, um, it works with Zoom. They tried to get it work to work with, um, with Hangouts and Teams and it didn't work. So what did they decide to do? They called out on TikTok to get all of their users and the TikTok following they're having to crash the, the the reviews. So that's another kind of like sort of like activism or prank we're seeing today is that you can mobilize on TikTok and like tank companies' reviews to try in an attempt to get them out of the of the of the app store. 
Wow. Yeah. So, for example, it says within weeks, Google Classroom's ratings fell from 4.4 stars to 1.6 stars, amazing more than a million reviews. Other distance learning tools like Schoolology and Zoom were also targeted. But Google Classroom, which Google says has been used by more than 100 million students and teachers during the shutdown, has like been the primary target. Um, and it went... Um, uh, like it's it's like I said, the overall rating went from four point four to one point six, and you could see one of the reviews was quite revealing of like the movement that's been happening and through TikTok. So the review says, um, so it's a one star review. Yeah, I've been using this app for a minute now, and it seems to be slow and not helpful most of the time. It's not a good app to be able to have in the Apple Store. TikTok Army Unite. Wow. So it's a pretty <laughs> stupid to write like the TikTok Army Unite. Yeah. Because you're totally like, you're basically like stating in the review that it's a fake review. Um, and I think, um, so what effect is this, you know, this and the general move, I mean, the general move into online teaching, you know, that we're introducing a lot of new technologies. What impact is that actually having on teachers? Maybe the, the boring teachers you're talking about now will wake up and they will realize they have to be a little bit more entertaining in class. So students actually don't think about pulling all pranks on them. I definitely think that the students pulling pranks, they'll pull pranks regardless. Um, and I think to me, it was interesting that one of the guys interviewed um, in the story said that I would never pull off a prank um, in real life in a classroom but I don't feel a hesitation towards doing it online. I think that right there tells us everything that's wrong with society right now. Yeah. The fact that we're um, dumping naked pictures of previous boyfriends and girlfriends, the fact that we're um, doing cyberbullying, that we're talking in a voice so ugly and demeaning to people online that we would have never done before because it's on the internet is totally unacceptable. Um, I think that, of course, it's not helping um, that um, President Trump, who still right now is the president, um, and we don't know what way that will turn out. He's definitely not been a role model in behavior of how you're allowed to talk to people online. And I think Melania wa Trump, one of her um, limited initiatives as a first lady, which was an anti-bullying campaign, was also not well received due to the, to the general rhetoric practices of her family. But it honestly seems as if we still, in the age of technology, believe that because there's a screen behind, like between us, that we're allowed to disrespect people. And that is not the case. You are equally responsible of your own behavior when it's mediated through a text message or on a website or through a picture as you are when you're next to the person. And you will hurt the other person's feelings just as much.